Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitmore Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitmore Watch Company. Maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. Max Eastman, author, poet, and editor, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our honored guest this evening is Tadeusz Kowarowski better known as the famed General Bohr, leader of the Polish underground in World War II. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. General Bohr, our chronoscope audience, of course, knows you as one of the great underground leaders of our generation. You are an, un an expert on underground warfare. Now, sir, uh, and you are an immigre from Poland now. What brings you to America? I was invited by the Pulaski Parade Committee to attend the Pulaski Parade as guest of honor. I see. So you've been, uh, you're a guest in America now for a few weeks. Yes, that's right. And you are now living in London? I'm living, I have been living in London since 1945. We, uh, of course, uh, know your story of how uh, the Europe Polish underground opposed Hitler and uh, then how the Russians uh, uh, failed to come to your aid. That's true. The Russians waited until you were virtually destroyed, wasn't it? Yes, it's right. And uh, th is there bitterness now in Poland against the Russians? Oh, yes. The bitterness is very strong against the Poles, against the Russians, as they know very well. We, we are anxious to get your opinion, sir. In America, our people are placing a great deal of hope in the underground movements in the satellite countries. And we'd like your opinions on the nature of underground warfare against the Russians. Now, uh, are the Russians more difficult to oppose with underground methods than the Germans were? Oh, I think they are much more difficult. And why, sir? <coughs> During the German occupation in Poland, it was warfare. Now we live in peacetime. Do you other think an underground movement is possible in peacetime? I don't think that an underground movement is possible for a long time in peacetime. Are the Russians uh, more ruthless in dealing with underground movements than the Germans were? The Germans had no experience of underground, and the Russians are masters in underground. Russians know more about how to combat underground movements. Oh, they know very well. Yeah, they were all underground themselves. But aside from, that, aside from the underground movement, what about uh, um, underground propaganda? What do you think is the value of our shortwave radio, this voice of America, and all these attempts to get propaganda into Poland? Is I that useless? It's very important as all the people listen very carefully to all news coming from the free world. Whenever you were uh, fighting so desperately against the Germans, sir, were your people uh, made more hopeful by the radio contact with the rest of the world? Oh, yes, it's only radio that made them helpful. If you think an underground movement is impossible in peace, that must mean you're waiting for a war, doesn't it? Oh, yes, for the war, I think it's, it's How very important. How soon is important. it coming? Yes. How soon is it coming? When the war starts, it will I mean, <laughs> I mean, how soon do you expect the war to start? It's very difficult to answer, but I don't expect a war earlier than in two years. Perhaps. Why? First of all, I think 
that the Russian don't want to have a war now. When they would have liked to have a war, the war would be started two or three years ago. And all are preparing their strengths now. Nobody is ready. Why oh. didn't they start it two or three years ago? In three or two years, the strengths of the Western powers will improve, and the Russian will have to decide. Do, do you uh, regard our present efforts in Europe as hopeful, sir? Do you think that we are building a, a hopeful counterweight to Russian power in Western Europe? Oh, yes, I think it's very hopeful. Do you think that it's possible for General Eisenhower to build an effective army out of the out of French and Italians? Oh, sure. Now, uh, sir, here in America, a great many people were disillusioned after the Second War. They were, a great many Americans had regarded the Russians as allies, and so they were bitterly disappointed at uh, the betrayals that the Russians seemed to be guilty of. Now, were you people in, in Poland as bitterly disappointed with the Russians as we were in America? No, we were not disappointed. We knew the Russian too well and their attitude towards Poland during all the long years of the war. You must have known it after they double-crossed your uprising. But you were surprised when they double-crossed your uprising, weren't you? Yes, I didn't think that the Russian would stop their offensive for political reasons. And you, as a military man, they had military reasons to come to your assistance, didn't they? Uh, yes, sure. But it to was take it was Warsaw, it was very important from military point of view. But it was a political decision that uh, resulted in your destruction. I think it was only political decision. They wanted the Germans to destroy you so that they wouldn't have to afterward. Isn't that about it? Oh, yes. Don't yeah. you agree with me that it's about the worst act of treachery to an ally in history? I agree completely. Now, sir, the date of the, uh, of the uh, Warsaw Uprising and your double cross by the Russians, that was uh, about November 1944, wasn't it? Yes. And then the, the conference at Yalta was held some four months later, wasn't it? Yes. Now, uh, you people, of course, were disappointed at uh, what was what you call the sellout at Yalta, weren't you? I was this time prisoner of war, and when we got the news to our English friends, oh, it was really a blow for us. And you, you were bitterly disappointed at the at the way the Western Allies seemed to have uh, sold out Poland at Yalta. Yes, we saw what will happen with Poland. What is the uh, position of the Polish army now? You have some intelligence, of course, in Poland now, haven't you? Oh, <coughs> news are coming from Poland very often. So we know what happened in Poland. And nearly all the officers from Major Adverts are Russian. Uh, in other words, you, the, there is a Polish army now, isn't there? Yes, the soldiers are Poles. I it's see. really good Poles. I see. But the command is a Russian command. And that's, Would, they, they, they're, they're Russians from Major on up, is, is yes. your information. Wouldn't that be a pretty weak army to rely on if Stalin marched towards the Atlantic? I don't think that this army would be reliable to Stalin. He would he hate to have it behind him, wouldn't he? Yes. <laughs> that, that's one of the possible deterrents of the Russians uh, from starting a war, isn't it? Now, sir, one question. Uh, Americans have heard a great deal about the so-called Katyn Massacre. Uh, we were told at first that the Germans had killed uh, a great many Polish officers. Are you convinced that it was the Russians who destroyed the Polish officers? I was convinced when I got the news from one of my men that I sent to Katyn in '43 to investigate all in Katyn and to bring me all the news and all what he had seen in Katyn. From this time I had, I had no doubt at all. 
And it was Russian propaganda to tell us in the Western world that those Poles had been killed by Germans, wasn't it? Yes. Do you think it would be a good thing if the United States came out firmly and openly for the overthrow of the Stalin regime in Russia and in the satellite countries? Oh, I see. I think it I would suppose be. you don't want to advise our government. That's the <laughs> reason I put the question that way. Uh, it wouldn't create an underground movement, I suppose, but it would create an underground movement in people's minds, surely. Yes, the people resist now very strongly to communism, but they wait for the right time. Uh, General, in America, of course, uh, we remember uh, General Pulaski very kindly, and we've always admired the Poles as great fighters. Now, in your lifetime, do you expect to return to Poland, sir? Yes, I, I expect to return to Poland. I'm sure to return in my life to Poland, to free Poland. Do you expect to live until Stalin dies? Oh. And what do you think will happen then? When Stalin dies, I think some other prominent communists will fight between themselves. But it's quite indifferent. It would be a fight between the communists and Politburo. But I don't think something would change in Russia. Then, uh, General, as our audience has understood you, sir, uh, you would like the Poles in America to understand that Poland has been through many troubles before and that you think that one day Poland will be free again. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Max Eastman and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was Tadeusz Komorowski, better known as the famed General Bohr, leader of the Polish underground in World War II. Coast to coast, the football season is in full swing. And coast to coast, the football games from more than 100 leading colleges and universities are timed by Longines, the world's most honored watch in sport. Yes, the games of Princeton, Harvard, Dartmouth, California, Texas A&M, and Georgia Tech, and a hundred more are all timed by Longines watchers. All professional games, too, are Longines timed. All officials of the National Football League, the field judges, the referees, and the observers use Longines watches exclusively for official timing. The reason? Accuracy, not as an empty claim, but accuracy which has been demonstrated time after time and year after year in the competitive accuracy trials at the great government observatories. Yes, for beauty, for greater accuracy, for the promise of a long and useful life. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight again, inviting you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for The Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine, sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.